Welcome to Field Days 2023 and I'm on a mission today to try and find toys, industrial equipment, machinery, everything that used to be the domain of combustion that is now running on electric power. Let's go hunting. Yep, this was my first ever time to Field Days and I thought it was some stuff in a paddock. I didn't realise it was a city-sized event. Look at the size of this thing! But I was on a mission to find electric stuff and clean tech and boy did I find it. Well that was easy. I didn't have to walk more than 10 metres. This is the Ionic 6 from Hyundai. Now I've tested this car recently, the top spec model. It's an absolute dream to drive, incredibly efficient. One of the long range versions of this can do more than 600 k's on a charge and I'll put a link underneath this video so you can go and see that review. This is an interesting car but this is just the tip of the iceberg, let's see what else Hyundai has on offer. I made a beeline towards the trucks because I reckon at least one of those things has to be electric, surely. Diesel, 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 aha here we go, We've got an electric model right here. Found ourselves an electric truck, that wasn't hard, mighty electric. Let's see if we can find out some information about this thing. And I found some, with the short version being that this mighty electric from Hyundai can handle up to 5,995 kilos maximum gross weight, and with its 114 kilowatt hour battery pack, it has a stated range of up to 240 k's per charge. However, Hyundai has not released pricing yet. So let's carry on hunting. I didn't realize this place was so big. I thought it was a few paddocks with some stuff on it. I didn't realize it's an actual city. We're at a crossroads now, we're going hunting now. Suzuki has been famously dragging their feet on electric vehicles. Let's see if they've got anything battery powered in stock in the quad bike or farm bike department. Let's go have a look. Unfortunately, every single thing on display had an exhaust pipe, which is a shame because if they made one of these in electric, I would be among the first to buy it. But still onwards and upwards because there was still heaps to see, including cool robotic stuff like this that runs on batteries. My spirits are not dampened though because I've come across Husqvarna and I know they make electric stuff. Let's see what they got. There we go. That little beastie is electric. Look at all these electric toys here. Awesome. Electric mowers are interesting but it's not new, we all know they exist. What I was after was bigger equipment that never used to be electric. And Polaris is a great example because they drew in big crowds for their ATV display but their electric model won't be coming till later this year, although I am looking forward to getting my hands on it. So the search continued for bigger, heavier electric equipment. In the meantime I was looking at singing possums and the professional nibbler, which was incidentally my name at high school, and it didn't take long before I saw something pretty darn cool. All right, jackpot. I see a manufacturer just down there, and I know they sell some pretty heavy duty electric stuff that was once the domain purely of combustion. Come check this out. This is what I'm talking about. Check this out. Fully battery powered excavator. Listen how quiet the thing is. I found someone who can answer some questions. This is Louis from e -Trucks. Okay, so what is this giant thing? Yeah, so this is our XC968 EV loader. It's a 20 ton loader, 272 kilowatt of battery in it. Um, obviously, the, the, you've got two charging ports yep. in it as well. So uh, if you put in 180 kilowatts of charging into it, maybe 290 kilowatts, you can charge it in an hour and a half. So charge you know? in an hour and a half. Okay, so what advantage, if I was say uh, an earthworks company and I had the choice sure. between this and a diesel version, okay. what's the cost advantage? We all know the, yeah. the carbon advantage, what's the cost advantage? So the great thing from a commercial point where it makes sense is that suddenly you can own a loader and that by saving your, your diesel, you know, you can save a third of the price of your diesel. So if you go and work it out to the sums of 260 days of working, uh, 120 litres of diesel that you use on a day, uh, you look at a saving of about a $40,000 in a year. You know, so that's quickly paying for your infrastructure. That's quickly, uh, you, you'll actually utilise that money for paying off the machine. From a commercial side, it just makes sense. These obviously do come at a higher initial cost than a comparative diesel, I guess. It actually doesn't. You know, if what? you look at a... That's, a, not, what, that's not what I heard. What yeah. <laughs> so if you look at some of our comp competition, and I won't mention names, yeah. it's actually at the similar kind of pricing. Far out. Yeah. So, so why would I buy a diesel then if I've got stuff like this? And I'm guessing less maintenance as well because it's got no combustion parts. We can, we can just go around the corner and I can sign you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> it might so. annoy my neighbours. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you can answer this or not, but... Is all the traditional competition just a little bit wary of you guys, a bit scared? They are. Um, one of the guys got actually caught overseas with the invoice trying to copy the Chinese. You know, no so, <laughs> yeah, no. so uh, it's gone a long way from 
from uh, being a market leader, you know, if you look at our smaller excavator, smaller uh, 918 electric truck, it actually won the, the, the Red Dot Award at the BOMA show in Germany. You know, yeah. so it's definitely getting the attention. Oh, you got to, if you're if you're invested in diesel tech, you've got to be a little bit nervous right now. Sure. Far sure. out. Get I love where this is going. Working. All right. <laughs> Seeing that monstrous battery powered heavy equipment had me buzzing, so I was now on the hunt for more electric powered stuff. Well, that was quick. I've already found some. Check this out. I, I'm sorry, I've got a goofy smile on my face because electric powered stuff is just better. It's cool. And it is none other than JCB. This is Dave, and behind us is a JCB little electric digger. Can you tell me about it? What is it? Well, this is our 1.9 ton uh, electric excavator. Um, you know, great machine for working indoors without, where fumes are an issue. Ah, right, that was going to be my next question. Oh. Where do you use that? What advantage does it have? But indoors, obviously. Indoors, uh, where you need absolute quietness. Um, there's been some sold to uh, to dig graves because they can't have noise. <laughs> okay, you, 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 you don't want to wake the dead up. But, uh, <laughs> But it's just, it's really also, um, it's really indoors, you know, fumes are an issue, like some excavators can have generators on them, but we don't need that. Gotcha. Well, okay, on that subject, how long can you run on a typical... Five hours usage? continuous. Which is five a, hours non-stop? Which is a lot for a small excavator, because okay. most small excavators only do, do two to three hours a day. They just gotcha. at low utilisation. How do you charge the thing? That's probably an important question. Where's the charging port? What does it look like? Charging port. Oh, that's it? Yeah. How does that open up? Oh, there we go. Oh, so it's like a caravan plug. Yeah. And how long does the charging time take typically? About eight hours. Eight hours? Okay, so eight hours of charging, you got... There is fast charges as well. Oh, yeah? And that would be sort of an hour and a half to two hours. That, that's all right. Yeah. Brilliant. All right, thank you very much for your time. Very happy to see JCB getting on the electric action. Right now, though, I've got something else I'm trying to find. Now, if I were to cover everything in this event, the video would be five hours long. But there is something I want to see because I haven't seen it with my own eyes. It's battery powered. It's just been revealed the last couple of days. Let's see if we can find it. This is worth waiting for. I kept on searching, but in the meantime, found a few side quests like the New Zealand Fire Service, which put this burnt out tractor on display. They said that this is a common occurrence where birds make nests in combustion farm equipment and it gets hot really quickly, catches fire and boom, there goes thousands of dollars down the drain. There was also stuff I didn't even think about, like two-wheel drive farm bikes and solar-powered fencing. This is Mark, and Mark, can you tell me, what are we looking at right here? Yeah, so we're looking at our i-series energizer wall, the latest and greatest in our uh, technology around mains and solar operations, yeah. So this is for electric fences, right? Correct, so exactly. why would you use this instead of a main supply? Yep, so with our solar is, gives us the ability to get into backcountry areas, uh, high country stations, uh, blocks that are off grid as such. Gotcha. Um, gives, gives, gives farmer that, that solution for those areas really. So we've got behind us some solar panels. What sort of size farm could these supply? Yeah, so we can get right up to 120 hectares um, area, but the advantage of solar is we can put that energizer anywhere. Uh, ideally we like to put it in the middle of that farm, so we get a lot of lot better gotcha. um, energy source distribution across the farm. So uh, we just have to be mindful that we, uh, given the size of the energizer, that we model it right with the size of paneling and battery to, to suit the system. Yeah. Yep. I genuinely had no idea this place was this big. Seriously, you take a side street and it goes on to another side street and it just goes on and on and on. They've got everything here. They've got solar panel arrays, they've got greenhouses as well, got everything. Ah, oh, look at this. There's Phoenix Metal Man and look at that, another e-truck, battery powered truck. How cool is that? And they recycle everything. This is the Kiwi spirit, man. This is brilliant. We've got to make a beeline for that electric truck. This electric truck is particularly interesting because I know that Phoenix Metal Recyclers are putting a lot of effort into carbon reduction and going green, which makes sense because they recycle everything. So, you know, it's logical to make your trucks electric as well. Their entire factory line, they're working hard to make it all electric. That is the way to go. Meanwhile, the search continued and I stumbled across Volkswagen's latest electric offerings as well as something a little older. I'm in the Volkswagen stand right now and there's something behind me that is worth checking out. This is a classic Volkswagen combi bus that has been converted to electricity by a company called The Surgery. They do amazing work. Check this out. So they've taken the battery from a Volkswagen e-Golf and chucked it in here and they've got the guts of it from a company in California to make it run on pure clean electric power. As 
you can see, it's a bit of a crowd pleaser, but this is not the thing I'm here to see. I've still yet to find it. Let's go hunting. I made a little pit stop while I'm on the hunt because I've arrived at the Ford stall where you'll see the Mark E. Now, on Friday, I just released the Mark E review. That's worth checking out. I'll put a link underneath this video so that you can find it. The Mark E was possibly one of the most surprising cars I'd ever reviewed. Seriously, I wasn't a huge Ford fan, but I think they may have converted me. Seriously, check that video out. It will impress you, I promise. These all-electric Ford Mustangs were getting a fair amount of attention, but like Bono said, I still hadn't found what I was looking for. But that was about to change. Awesome news, after about 10,000 steps, I finally found what I'm looking for. BYD. Wait till you see a brand new model that's just been unveiled inside. We have, right here, the brand new BYD Seal. Been waiting quite a while to see this beast in the flesh. It's a really good looking car. I mean, if you are blessed with eyes, you can't deny that is a decent looking machine. The sleek looking BYD Seal will be available in three different flavors with impressive acceleration times and impressive range offerings. But it's the looks that grab my attention, especially that interior. If you're subscribed to this channel, then you'll know I love interior designs that are just a little bit different. So that bluish gray upholstery option, well, it just makes my dinglies all dangly. The BYD Seal looks quite premium brandish, which makes me think the price when it's announced in a few weeks will also be quite premium price-ish. It's insane, look at the amount of legroom in this thing. Just brilliant, and no transmission tunnel as well, flat floor, funky design, I love the fact. Oh wow, that's soft. I love the fact that it's not black and gray, it's different, I love it. Supposedly, this beast is supposed to be a direct competitor to the Tesla Model 3. Could be, might not be, watch this space. But what I am looking forward to doing is getting behind the wheel of this thing. Looking forward to getting my hands on it for a test drive. I'm gonna go ask the BYD dude now, see if I can get my name in the queue. So watch this space. There's another car here that's worth checking out. It is the new hatchback from BYD. Let's have a look. And this is it, it is the BYD Dolphin. It's a small electric hatchback. It's likely to compete with perhaps the Aura Good Cat and maybe even the MG ZS EV because it's a decent priced EV, it's loaded with gadgets, but it's actually a really city friendly car as well. Could even compete with the Peugeot E208. What do you reckon? I've managed to find someone who I think works for BYD, I'm not sure, uh, and his name is Warren. Okay, what can you tell me about this Dolphin? This particular Dolphin, this is the uh, BYD Dolphin Extended Range. This is our high performance version of the Dolphin. It's basically got the Atto 3 motor in it. It's a 60 kilowatt and it's 0 to 100 in 7 seconds. It's a little rocket ship. What's the difference between the two in terms of price and range? The two models of Dolphin? Yep. yep. So the standard range is 49,990. It has a 45 kilowatt hour battery and uh, has a 70 kilowatt output uh, motor giving you a 0 to 100 in about 12 seconds. So it's, a, it's, our, it's our standard range car, um, ideally set up for fleets, those fleets that have like pool cars or, uh, or little town commuters. And then the extended version has the 60 kilowatt battery that you find in the Atto 3 with a 150 kilowatt uh, motor attached right. to it. And that's a little rocket ship. Well, we have um, some demonstrators arriving uh, next month. First customer deliveries will be September. All right, and so both both models available. So I'm gonna just harass the BYD company, uh, <laughs> maybe July-ish. Maybe, maybe in the end of July. We've got to get July. them through the workshop and, and get them all sorted. But okay. Yeah, yeah. Watch this space. Hit the like and the subscribe button so you get to see me driving this thing. Very curious. And there you have it. That is some electrified highlights from Field Days 2023. Really excited to see this much electric stuff on display. Looking forward to seeing 2024. It's only gonna get better. See you next year.